Have you ever had a front porch? When I grew up, we, we had a front porch. My mother used to make homemade bread. And she'd set it on the front porch and cover a uh, um, cloth over it. You put it in the sunshine. But as you watch it, that, that sun moves on the porch. As it goes down, you get less sun or less, or, or more sun or less sun. What would you think if you went out one day and that shadow, wherever you're living, or you see, uh, you see the sun and the shadow below, and you go back 30 minutes later and that shadow is still the same place, and you go back 30 minutes later, it's still the same place. But in this case, it goes backwards. The shadow, instead of going forward, it goes backwards. That's the power of the God we serve. He just speaks, and it happens. Oh, the power of the great God. We should shudder in his presence. So, all in a day's work. Yeah, what did you do, Lord? Well, not too much. I just, um, you know, I just destroyed 185,000 Assyrians, and, you know, then I added 15 years to a king's life, and then I caused the sun to go backwards 10 degrees. That's, that's all, nothing too big, you know. Pretty good day's work, wasn't it? That's the power of the Almighty God. Then here's the passage we read a little bit earlier in Acts chapter 17. You remember Paul comes to Athens, and he finds them, uh, the King James Version here says superstitious, read it as, as was read earlier, it really means quite religious. And Paul stood in the midst of the Mars Hill, and he said, you men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you're too superstitious, or you're quite religious. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God, whom therefore you ignorantly worship him, I declare unto you. Now, Paul, what's this God like? Well, God <clears throat> made the world. That's one thing he did, and all the things in it. Now, of course, he is the Lord of heaven and the earth, and he doesn't dwell in temples that man makes, not in homemade temples. He isn't worshipped with men's hands because he doesn't need anything. He's the one, he gives everything. He gives to all. He gives life and breath and all things. And he's made one blood of all nation of men. Do you know that's why you can have a transfusion, any race? You can't take the, the blood out of a monkey and put it in a man, the man will die. But you can take the blood out of any human being and put it in another human being if it matches up the type of blood. And he will, he will take the blood and be fine. Why? Wow, that's the way God made it. A blood, one all, all, uh, one blood, all nation of the of earth, for men to dwell on the face of the earth. He's appointed the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. That is, you go so far and no farther, that they should seek the Lord, if happily they might feel after Him and find Him, though He be not far from every one of us. That's comforting, isn't it? Now, why, Paul? Because in Him. We live, we move, and we have our very being. That's impressive. And he said even some of your poets have said that much. For we are his offspring. For as much as then we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like gold and silver and stone graven by the arts and man's devices. And the times of this ignorance God winked at. But now commands all men everywhere to repent. Why? Because he's appointed a day in which you'll judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, that's the Christ, whereof he's given assurance in that he has raised him from the dead. I wonder how many people really, really, really believe this, that he's commanded every human being to repent, to change their mind and turn their lives to God. Everybody. Why? Because there's going to be a judgment day. And this Savior that's been raised from the dead is going to preside. And Christ is going to stand in front. You know, people go to, uh, to courthouses and they have uh, stand before a judge. And, and I remember when we adopted our, our youngest son, we had to go before court. I'm not sure about Joshua. And he was intimidating. The only time I've ever been, I think. But you stand before this judge, you know his power to grant it or to deny it. And you kind of shudder, and this was a, just a you know, little courthouse. Think about standing before this judge in the day of judgment. The one who has all these powers 
that we've talked about. It's his son. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder, when I consider all the works thy hand hath made, I see the stars, I hear that mighty thunder, thy power throughout the universe being displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art. How great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art. How great thou art. But I want to tell you the greatest thing that God has ever done was causing a woman who was a virgin, a young woman, probably in her teens, to be impregnated by the Holy Spirit and conceived inside of her the Son of God. That's the greatest manifestation of His power. And so the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Now Sunday is what's called in our land Christmas Day. It's obvious we do not celebrate religiously Christmas Day. Why? Because there is no evidence in the scriptures of the New Testament to indicate that we should. We observed a few moments ago that which is authorized and we do it every Sunday, which is the death of Christ. But I am so glad he was born, aren't you? And I'm so glad inside of that Mary was this conceived by the Holy Spirit, which was the Son of God. God taking on the form of a man. I can't grasp love that would cause the God to send his Son from heaven and cause him to leave a place of heaven and send him down below because he loved us that much. So Joseph, her husband being a just man, not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. And he said, Joseph, my son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit, is of God. And she shall bring forth a son, and I shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. All of this was done that might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, See, it was told a long time before that God would manifest his power in such a marvelous way. That a virgin shall be with a child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted means God with us. So, in essence, we could say then that God came down and became one with us, and he walked among mankind. And he was hungry, and he was thirsty, and he was tempted in all points like his we. Then Joseph rose from the sleep, did as the angel Lord had bidden him, and took unto his wife, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son. And he called his name Jesus. The greatest accomplish, accomplishment, as far as I can determine, that God ever did. To God be the glory. Great things he hath done. So loved the world that he gave us his son, who yielded his life in atonement for sin and opened that life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory. Great things he hath done. <coughs> So have you reckoned with this great God that we've talked about this morning? Bee's passing is sobering. She can't do a thing about her life anymore. Any preparation was done prior to 6 o'clock last evening. After 6 o'clock last evening, there's nothing she can do. I'm grateful she died in the Lord. But if you died tonight at 6 o'clock, would you die in the Lord? Would you have submitted yourself to the great God of the universe that we've tried in my feeble way to impress upon us the power of this great God this morning? Do we take it seriously when we see these scriptures? Do we humble ourselves before this great being and say, Oh, how great thou art. 
And then you hear him say, there's going to be a judgment. Do we respect that? Oh, I hope so. You know your life. And so if you died at 6 o'clock tonight, would you be willingly ready to face that Lord? <clears throat> Here's something to think about. The times of this ignorance, one more time, God once winked at, but now commands all men everywhere to repent because he's appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance in that he has raised him from the dead. I assure you, you see me stand before you. We're going to stand before God in judgment. Shall we do this with fear? Or shall we do it with love and anticipation? A decision we make today may very well make the difference. <coughs> Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Again, may I ask you, if you, like me, died at 6 o'clock tonight, would you be ready to face this great God that we've described in our study this morning? If not, I beg of you to take this admonition seriously. Repent of your sins. Confess that Jesus is the Christ. And have your body immersed in water for the remission of sins. Just like Terry did on Tuesday evening. And you can be added to the Lord's body if you fully understand. I wouldn't want to persuade anyone to do it if you don't understand. But if you do, consider it. For us who are in Christ, what if I died at 6 o'clock tonight? What if you died at 6 o'clock tonight? Are we ready? The God, the great God, the loving God, will one day be a judging God. Shall we sing to each other? Are filled with sorrow and care.